the woolly mammoth, the celebrity of the Ice Age, and the poster child of extinction. Imagine an elephant, but built for war against the cold. A thick coat of fur, curved tusks stretching up to four meters long, and a fat hump that worked like a built-in survival battery. These giants marched across frozen continents, crushing snow underfoot while saber-tooths stalked in the distance. Their world was brutal, but perfectly balanced. Predator, prey, and permafrost in harmony. Until something changed. The climate warmed, ice retreated, and then came us. Humans hunted them for meat, for fur, for glory. In a few thousand years, a blink in evolutionary time, the mammoth vanished. But here's the twist. Scientists are trying to bring it back. Frozen DNA, cloned cells, gene editing, turning extinction into an engineering problem. If they succeed, the woolly mammoth might walk again. And when it does, it'll return to a world missing one of its oldest enemies because waiting in the shadows of the Ice Age was a predator with fangs like swords and a taste for giants. The saber-toothed cat, a predator so perfectly built for violence, even its smile could kill you. Smilodon wasn't a fast runner like a cheetah. It didn't need to be. It was a heavyweight ambusher. Short legs, stocky body, and jaws armed with two serrated blades up to 20 centimeters long. Those teeth weren't for chewing, they were for execution. It hunted mammoths, bison, even giant sloths, striking from the shadows, going straight for the throat. One bite, instant silence. The Ice Age had many hunters, but Smilodon ruled through patience and precision. And yet, even kings fall. When the megafauna vanished, so did the cat that depended on them. Its fangs became useless, relics of a world that no longer existed. Evolution doesn't mourn, it just moves on. But here's the irony. For every predator that disappears, a prey species rises. And among those survivors stood a gentle giant. One so big, it could swat a saber tooth away like a house cat. Meet the giant ground sloth, the slow titan that time forgot. The giant ground sloth, proof that not all giants were monsters. Imagine a creature three tons heavy, standing taller than an elephant when it reared up on two legs, just to eat leaves. Its name was Megatherium, meaning great beast, and for early humans, that was no exaggeration. It wasn't fast, it wasn't fierce, but it didn't need to be. Thick skin, long claws, and sheer mass kept predators away. It lived by patience, a living boulder grazing through ancient forests. And when danger came, it didn't run. It simply stood up, casting a shadow big enough to make even a saber tooth think twice. But like all gentle giants, it had one fatal weakness, us. Humans followed the herds, set fires, built traps. Soon, the forests shrank, and the great sloths fell silent. Still, the Ice Age never ran out of killers. When the forests vanished, the plains opened, and a new terror rose. It didn't crawl or roar. It ran, fast, feathered, and furious. The Terror Bird was coming. The Terror Bird, a name that sounds exaggerated until you see the beak. After the dinosaurs vanished, South America became a laboratory of monsters. And this one, Forus Rakos, was evolution's experiment in speed and brutality. Three meters tall, flightless, with legs built for sprinting, and a skull shaped like a guillotine. It didn't soar through the skies, it ruled the ground charging at prey, slamming it with its beak, and delivering a killing blow that shattered bone. Imagine a mix between a raptor and an ostrich, but with worse intentions. For millions of years, nothing could challenge it, until a new kind of predator crossed the land bridge from the north. Smarter, faster, and with teeth instead of feathers. Mammals. And that's when the reign of the terror bird ended. The hunters became the hunted. But nature wasn't done designing nightmares. Because the mammals that replaced them didn't just run. 
Some of them became colossal, with jaws wider than your head and appetites to match. The next beast wasn't a bird. It was a mammalian monster. Meet Andrew Sarkis, the predator that looked like evolution's bad dream. Andrew Sarkis. A name that sounds like a scientist, but this one ate scientists for breakfast. Picture a skull almost a meter long, massive jaws lined with crushing teeth. Part wolf, part hippo, all nightmare. It lived 45 million years ago when mammals began experimenting with size, and subtlety wasn't on the menu. We know it from a single skull, no full skeleton, no complete fossils, just that one massive head. And from it, paleontologists had to imagine the rest. Some say it was a scavenger, others an apex hunter roaming coastal plains. Whatever it was, nothing wanted to meet it first. Its bite could crush bone, its senses tuned to carrion and blood. And yet, the mystery around it might be scarier than the animal itself, because Andrew Sarkis shows us what happens when evolution plays without a rule book. But while this beast ruled the land with muscle and teeth, in another corner of prehistory, something stranger was crawling. Not a mammal, not even a vertebrate. A creature that ruled before giants had legs and stretched longer than a car. Next up, the crawling nightmare of the Carboniferous. Arthropleura, the millipede from hell. Arthropleura, the giant millipede from hell. Before the dinosaurs, before the mammoths, before anything walked on two legs, there was Arthropleura, a millipede the size of a car crawling through the Carboniferous forests 300 million years ago. It didn't roar, it didn't hunt, it simply existed. A silent tank made of armor plates, sliding over ferns taller than humans. This thing could reach 2.5 meters long and weigh over 50 kilos. And here's the creepy part, it wasn't a predator. It just didn't need to be. In a world rich with oxygen and poor in competition, even millipedes could become monsters. But then, the atmosphere changed, the air thinned, oxygen dropped, and giants like this suffocated out of existence. No meteor, no massacre, just the planet quietly deciding it had enough. Yet somehow, their legacy survived. Every centipede in your basement every bug that makes your skin crawl. They're the echoes of this ancient ruler. From mammoths to millipedes, from killers to crawlers, extinction is the great equalizer. No matter how powerful, strange, or perfect a creature becomes, nature always writes the same ending. And that's the beauty and the terror of life on Earth. See, in the next video, Bats, the creatures of the night that turn darkness into radar. If you made it all the way to the end, you officially survived evolution's greatest monsters. Now hit that like button, subscribe for more extinct chaos, and tell me, which land beast would you not want to meet in the dark?